It's the time for mm, Pick It From China. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the retro game FC 520, or now known as the 520 in one from Embernic. Yeah, they made a lot of different handhelds, but this one comes with a particular feature I have, I think I've never seen it before. This thing comes with 40 VIB games or vibration function. Oh boy, yeah, here on the channel I've reviewed so many of these handhelds and I can say like I'm completely addicted to these things, just to see what it is, what you're going to get. So first of all, the handheld, the design, I personally really love it, like the way how it looks, it looks kind of fancy, especially now we're going to get this vibration function, hmm, it's interesting, I have seen it before with game systems, so let's open it up, ah, of course it comes with the Nokia battery, the BL5C battery. I have seen it before, I really love when you're using these things, they are super universal, very dirty, cheap to buy, so if you bring in handheld like this with you, you can bring yourself some extra batteries, and only 850 milliamp, I know they are around, um, I think the biggest one was 1250 milliamp, correct me if I'm wrong. Over here we're going to get volume control, uh, on and off switch, we're going to get an AV out and look at this, like this is really fancy, we're going to get Type-C for charging. Yeah, so that's something you don't see very every, every freaking day. Then we're going to have the AV out cable that we're going to try out. It comes here with the Type C cable. They're using very nice quality ones, and it comes with an extra controller. Because what you can do with this device is like plug it into con plug it into your television, use a controller on the device, and you can basically play together with your friend. And of course, of course, of course, it comes with a user manual. And uh, let's see that there's here explanation how everything works how you need to connect it to your television but it is quite obvious so what i do like about these 8-bit things is that you just plug it in and that's it like you don't do the, any hassle with configuration settings like plug and play action so the d-pad and all the stuff let's talk about it first because hmm, we need to talk about it and overall, I am not the biggest fan of this design. The reason why, because it's not very comfortable for big hands for a very long time. Another thing you need to take consideration when you're getting cheap China handhelds, yeah, you're not going to get the best LCD displays. I think this thing was 3.5 inches if I'm correct. But in the end, like it doesn't even matter, 2.8 or 3.5, they are like very tiny and the view angle is pretty damn awful. Okay, so the system itself looks quite nice when it comes to the finish, but they're just using a sticker over here. So it's like a red system with an, let's say, a gold looking, yeah, metal gold looking sticker. I'm not a big fan of it because I know it will peel off over time. Also, they didn't put it on correctly here. You can see like some differences over here. Just be nitpicky about any, anything. The D-pad itself feels very nice, like it feels very nice and I would not be surprised it plays very nice. Select start, the ABOI, so basically what you're going to get is AB and of course turbo buttons. So let's turn it on. You can already feel it vibrating. So the thing what we're going to get is that we're going to get two option menus and the right one is for the normal games and the left one is going to be for the vibration games. And of course they're ripping off the freaking Final Fight song. I don't know why they just keep doing that. It's quite annoying. Okay, so the volume itself. That was the maximum volume. At the back we're going to get this tiny mono speaker. I'm not a big fan of it because this thing doesn't sound that great. So, the game list will be a mix of naughty games, I love to call it. Then we're going to get ourselves like weird homebrew games. That are stuff that we're always going to get. That's the only thing... Do I have a brain fart? No, I don't have a brain fart. I'm missing out the freaking reset button. That's the first thing that I'm more like... This is actually like the first handheld that doesn't have a freaking reset button. Or do I need to press something? So this is the big list. The big list contains a lot of... Uh, like, a lot of crap. Like, they're doing the same thing all over again with these things. Like, I'll give an example. We got a game called Banana. Like... I don't have actually like an... What game? Like, stuff like this all the freaking time. But in consideration, these are like normal games, so the vibration function will not be active. It's kind of weird that they like put the effort to put this vibration function in an 8-bit system, but in the end, they don't put the effort of making it for every single game. Okay, so another game I just needed to show you is this 
panda game. So, hmm, where does this stage look familiar? Where do I know the sounds from, hmm? You know, some sound effects are pretty damn cool. And again, this is a game without a vibration function, so we don't have the vibration function. So that keeps me wondering, it's like, do we have the secret stage over here? Okay, okay let's see if I can do it. Can I do it? So it's really funny that they like didn't completely overhaul of this game, but you can really see like the first issue we're having with these cheap devices. We got screen tearing to the maximum level. Seriously, like it's crazy. There are no pipes. There are like wooden cut off trees that you need to get into. Still has like the original soundtracks or sound effects. You say correctly. There is no soundtracks whatsoever. Oh yep. Oh crap! Oh. oh, these sound effects are different. Okay, so next up I want to try a game with the vibration function, but sadly they did implement it with some things like when you jumping through the hoops, you can feel it vibrating. And I'm guessing when I'm hitting it, I will also have this. Oh yeah, the vibration going on not. But it's not like the feeling, the vibration feeling you're having with jumping or something like that. So it's quite limited with some things. It's quite interesting. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Okay, another game I just wanted to try is like how will this work with a pinball. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's see who does anything with the bumper. Oh yeah, that's a really cool effect. So with the bumper, we'll get this vibration feeling so that is pretty cool so so you know like even with 8-bit games and vibration motor can give such a big difference when it comes to the gameplay i think it's pretty cool now they need to like improve this bloody thing and just get it with every single game oh yeah i messed it up already great wicked all right so next up let's play it on a television we're going to be old school with a crt i just wanted to show you how this works out and i must say like it's really plug and play and also tried the second controller and seemed to be working just fine. But only with the second controller there was no vibration function. They will all be working only on the handheld itself. A little bit of a bummer. So other thing I really hate about this thing is like the cable is short and when I'm accidentally like bumping it, that's what happened. We got a lot of problems with the freaking connection. But I just wanted to show you like, let's play with two players. I think it's pretty cool that we're going to get this future. But I already mentioned like the vibration function doesn't work. It's a little bit of a bummer. I wish they fixed that. That would be like a big improvement. Okay, so let's see if we can lower the volume. See, now the volume will not work when you're playing a game. They call this game Bejeweled. A series like, what the hell? This is basically like in columns, only for the NES part. I don't know if it was the original name. Are we holding the system really still? It seems to be working just fine. All right, guys, so let's do a quick teardown just to see what's inside. I'm also curious what kind of vibration function they're using now in this very tiny handheld. The handheld, yes, I said it quite weird, like handheld. Yeah, it's me, handheld, yes. I'm going to open it up because this is like a we call the pretend, oh yes. Sorry, I just needed to do that. But let's remove the four screws because these things are like super easy to open up. Okay, so is it me or are there like a lot of stuff not connected to the PCB or soldered on it? Oh, interesting. So they did like solder these very tiny cables onto the PCB. Oh boy. <laughs> Look at <there. laughs> Okay, so this is the vibration motor. And the funny thing is like they stacked a lot of these foams on it to basically keep it in place. Like... <laughs> Yeah, that's the way how you can do it. Is it. Oh man, there are like four other screws that we need to remove. Otherwise, I can't remove it. Can I remove the speaker itself? Oh crap. I think I just basically broke it. Okay, let's put it back together. <coughs> okay, so let's remove the other four parkers that he oh, Only four? No, no. Six of them. Holy crap. They did use a lot of freaking parkers this time in this handheld. Oh man. 
and I'm understanding like this will keep everything in place, like the button membranes, stuff like that. All right. Okay, so let's see what we can find on the other side. So the LCD is attached with a ribbon cable. All right. They are using like the cheap membranes over here. I really don't like them at all. The touch itself was not that bad. Okay, so at the front we're going to get some information when this device has been made. So maybe I can use Petacus. Yeah, I think I can remove the screen protector this way. Alright, so let's remove it here. Then, then we're going to get the same stuff that we've seen before. Okay, so let's do a quick tour on the PCB itself. We're going to get four foams over here that holds the LCD in place. If these are not here, basically the LCD will touch the chip over here too. So it's going to be messy. Then we're going to get the NES on the chip and the black bulb. I'm guessing under here we can find a firmware. Then we're having like the date of this and the version. So this is the Retro FC 512, yeah, 520 version 1.4 or 520 is the model and 1.4 is the firmware. It has been made in 2020, so I've made the video. It's already a year old or so. So yeah, it's not like the latest product. It has been on the market for some time. Curious if they're going to release a new version in the future. But putting this thing back together, it's not that hard to be honest. But I must almost need to be very gentle, especially when it comes to this freaking cable. If it gets broken, I need to resolder it again. And we could toss it like that. Okay guys, so this is what we're going to get with the Ember Nick 520 retro game system. It's a mix of everything like homebrew, crappy games, naughty games, vibration games. But in the end, when you're looking at this, it's more like a quite interesting concept. It's not 100% new. Because there are some things I have seen before, especially when it comes to the vibration games. I have seen it with the game system called, I think it was something like VIB30 or something like that. But this is what you're going to get with the device like this. These things are very cheap. I find it fascinating to see just how they can make it for the money. Yeah, I'm more like the controllers are okay, not like a fun thing to play for a long time. The same goes with the handheld. It's a fun piece of product. Yeah, it's, it's fun to bring with you maybe on vacation if you want to play some old school games. The vibration function do like, it's a very cool add-on, but they need to make it for every single game. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing. Hit the little bell icon on the Wicked family. And I will see you in the next video.